the project about and what are the questions that you have. Anyone? Bakar? Yeah, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you. So, to my understanding, we we will be building a visualization and the chatbot uh, for uh, a chatbot for uh, Redash to create an SQL statement for. Uh, like using natural language process. So we'll be using OpenAI keys and uh, integrating into Redash for uh, to make non-technical non people or democratize the uh, SQL or query language. So we'll be leveraging uh, LLMs or large language models. So <coughs> for for the natural natural language understanding. So we will also be building the front-end system. Probably we'll actually be learning on UI UX or the chat window. OK, so sorry. OK, so, so we'll be also building the backend. Is it? Tedros, can, can you mute? Tedros, can you mute? Tedros Charu. Yeah, go on. Uh, okay. okay. So, so we, all in all, that is uh, what we will be doing. So we will use yeah. an open API for uh, LLM or the chat GPT access. Uh, we'll be using integrating for long chain, uh, like RAG, uh, retrieval augmented uh, system, so, or generation. So, what we will be doing is uh, using the data source as uh, the Redash data source or the, the our data source as a database and using the large language motion as a backend. So, uh, so data handling uh, probably incorporates a vector database, I guess. So I think this is my understanding on the task. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And so how, also just like when other people come in, can you also um, talk about how much, like in the last one couple of days, I mean, if you have been working and it was supposed to be just a work day, even if there was no, um, there was no sessions. So how much have you done so far? You can also tell us. Okay, thanks. Um, okay. And then now let's continue, Abu Bakar, thank you. Yeah, and maybe just you can continue, like, did you do something? Uh, okay, yes. so yes, uh, I have been actually reading about uh, several topics that were given from uh, the from the given documents, such as function calls and rags, uh, which was really interesting topics. So LLMs, uh, agents, it was uh, I was reading on trying to trying to understand in gathering more information about the challenge that's coming forward and also uh, discovering the data data actually didn't uh, somehow didn't start on setting up my environment but uh, i tried to see the data uh, using just interactive uis for example excel and everything so uh, i've been actually reading about OpenAI. Uh, 
that was given to Langchain, for example, like their prompts, how it works, and what's what actually is RUG. Uh, they were actually very interesting. I have actually gotten to a little bit more understanding on LLMs uh, and uh, RUGs with development generation and fine tuning, and also vector vector database, which were essential part of uh, the AI applications to process a huge amount of data efficiently. So I got some understanding more on that the past okay. day. Okay, great. Well done. I think that was expected as well. So that's good. You're, you're on the right track. Jabez? Okay, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so based on my understanding that we are going to uh, build a dashboard on Redash, uh, but the uh, the interesting part is that we're going to integrate a chatbot on the Redash dashboard. So what I, from my understanding is that uh, the chatbot are going to uh, interact with the user so that maybe uh, a summarization of the the dashboard or if someone asks a question on the chatbot the uh, the chatbot will give answer based on the dashboard i think that's my understanding to do that uh, there are some uh, technologies that we are supposed to use that one is the open ai api so what i understand is that the api which is a uh, an integration for uh, for uh, applications so we are going to in integrate uh, the uh, gen AI. So it's very hard to, I think my understanding is that it's very hard to generate uh, a, generate, uh, a generative AI model for ourselves, but we can uh, use the open AI uh, models uh, and integrate it to our application. So we are using the open AI API uh, uh, to integrate with open AI and get the models. So, and the another thing that I understand is that there is the lang chain, and what I understand is that lang chain is a framework uh, that is used uh, to make it easy for developers to uh, to use uh, open AI. It, it is easier to use uh, lang chain so that we can use open AI APIs. And uh, lang chain, I think, from my understanding, is not only for open AI, but also there is a, a hugging, hugging phase. And I understand that it is also there are other models, AI models that we can use from the hacking phase, I think, so that we can integrate generative AI in our application. So the other one that uh, I w I'm ha ha having a hard time is the LLM, LLM index. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I I understand that it is a it says that it is a introspect agent. That means that uh when we chat with the chatbot that it will have a context so it will get the it will uh, use the previous uh, discussion to integrate it to the the next session so i i little bit saw how th that works uh but it used the previous one uh, also and the other one is it's also uh uh, will improve uh, based on uh, a response. So it takes a response and then it will uh, try to give a more appropriate uh, result. So this is where my understanding. So my question, uh, uh, if I can ask, I, uh, can I ask now or later? Yeah, yeah. You, you can ask question. Okay, so my, uh, what I'm having trouble is that we are, uh, we are supposed to build the dashboard, but it says that we are using a YouTube analytics. So are we gonna fetch YouTube uh, analytics or are we supposed to use any channel to fetch? Because, because we are supposed to uh, create a schema for the YouTube analytics. So are you going to build a schema on Postgres or something, then fetch the data to Postgres and then uh, build a dashboard that, uh, based on that schema? And is the data, uh, uh, I think there is a data CSV files that was shared to us. Are we going to extract the data from that or uh, is there anything else? That was my first question. Uh, and uh, the second question is about the report. We are supposed to uh, submit a report uh, tomorrow. 
uh, uh, is the report the interim report is it about the general because we have we have we are given two uh, two things to that the, the first one is that our general understanding about the technologies and the other one is we are given a, an article a, a link for uh, an article and we have supposed to be i think a report on the article so is that on the article or our understanding on the technologies this is my so question I think, and the I think other problem i am facing is that maybe when I, yeah go on go on uh, sorry the, the last one i when i try to use the api key it's it says uh, insufficient quota i think uh, there is a, a limit to use api key so maybe are we, are you going to share we can use i think i have to pay or something like that that's all thank you no i think i, I think we will provide that one and we will if that is the case we'll, it will be fixed so like your main contact for that is Kurta. so Kurta will be able to fix that one so that should not be an issue it should work and um and then the second one i think from your question it's like so just let me while i'm in the data the data is here you're going to use the data and almost always if you read the analyze what it means you know it's basically you are supposed to do this work on the data that is given and that's a youtube data because that's what the target is right? the business need is uh, the aim of the project is to build a novel Redash chat add-on that our team members can use to extract data from multiple Redash dashboards and from connected databases using natural language. So that's the key. But for this one, so you will be basically um, the the you will create those. At first, you will you will have to create, of course, a database given this data. So it's very a simple data. And there will be also a tutorial, but when you look at it, it should be easy and straightforward. Um, what this data and how to put it as as a database. So you have to design schema and put it there. Okay, that's one. And regarding like the, I think you have asked about the difference about uh, Lama index. I mean, I will come back to it. But in terms of the submission, he said it's like the first submission is more about like your overall understanding. So, and let me just go to the submission part so that it is so. A PDF report with an overview of your understanding of the key LLM tools and APIs. So, to address task two, so this is uh, so this ones normally, I think this is a little bit of overkill for, for this one. The most important part is normally this this review that we are going to create it's a lot more about like the general understanding the summaries that you have been doing you have, you have been doing research because without having a clear understanding of their interrelations between OpenAI, long chain vector database llama index you know it's harder to make progress so you have to understand what they are and how they are used you know what they are used for so that one is the but then the next part is basically um it's much more for you i think for us and this is a, a lot more additions we want you to think about data structures and algorithms because mostly in job interviews those are the key parts that most people um you know they just study only for the interview and they don't build intuition about it and we want it for people to start thinking about this this key cases um, so that it becomes natural for you to think whatever you do, you know, how does, what is the complexity of it? You know, how does it scale in terms of like um, process and memory? So it's that one. So in principle, this one is just much more of kind of thinking about how the algorithm and data structure in, in the sense like um, of just the SQL query um, that you are going to generate. So it is about this too, right? And then this one is just basically just the GitHub that I have been doing. And this is work in progress that it shows. So I think it should be clear the most important part is that you have to understand what the different technologies, the different tech stacks in this, in particular, you know, how all of this interact. Langchain, uh, Lama Index, Vector Database, OpenAI, they're all similar, just doing some things that you just have to understand clearly. So 
there will be tutorials and I will explain as well. Now, it should be clear, but the submission is just these two. I don't know what you meant by some reference that you have to then um, summarize. It's just all, it's just your understanding, your review. Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. I, I will just, okay. if you go to task one, there is a... Uh, Lots of re references, right? Yeah, this one has a reference. Uh, this one has a reference. There are many references, just to help and you. And a little bit, this, if you go, yeah, this one, the bros, the following... There are many references. One. Yeah, there are many references, right? So it's, of course, like this one is for the second or SQL generation using LLMs. So these are much more to give you a, an idea, right? Uh, so what it really says, almost always, the most important authority in terms of what is submission is the submission section. Anything that's written inside, it's to help to relate. But the most important part is the submission. What is written in the submission uh, section is what you need to focus in terms of submission. Everything else is just to help you connect. And if it's confusing you, you can ignore that one and focus on, on what is written in the submission section. Yeah? So this is just much more to say, how do people do SQL generation using LLMs? Okay? This is much more of the lots of case examples that how people are doing it. And it's just to help you build understanding. Is that clear? Okay, just... Uh... Yes, thank you. Okay, so, and I think you asked some question regarding, for example, uh, Lama index and uh, differences you didn't understand. I mean, you you can think of, uh, it's a very complex, Langchain and Lama index are a very, two frameworks that are, they do something similar. It's just uh, some are strong in one and another. The most common is Langchain, it has basically the, you know, and there's another one actually, Auto GPT as well, uh, which does something similar. Um, and a lot more long chain has been the most used, but Llama Index is also very much strong in data, especially in connecting your data handling. That means how you read data and write data um, in the process of, you know, like the, in the process of connecting and talking with, with the LLM, Lama index has a much more better structure. Again, it's a structure, but whatever long chain, whatever Lama index, you can do it maybe in long chain, maybe slightly in a complex way. Whatever also Lama index, whatever long chain it tries to do, Lama index probably has some support here and there. And there are many others as well, frameworks. But we want you to just basically, I think these are the most two common ones. Um, at least you have to understand what they are, right? Um, and how they are used. Vector database is again, long chain connects with many vector databases. Lama index also connects with vector. Data. Vector databases are basically how, you know, a way to store efficiently and retrieve efficiently vectors that are generated through embedding. And as you learn, as you understand, you will know better what I mean. It's basically conceptual vectors, you know, it's, it's like in a spatial way in longitude and latitude, you know, every object uh, in the world, for example, globally is, can be referenced, its location can be referenced by longitude, latitude and altitude, right? Where it is in terms of like uh, height. So by, by these three, that's basically, these are vectors in three dimensions or vectors in two dimensions. And they are spatial vectors. They represent the spatial information of an object. Now, vectors in terms of semantic vectors or the ones that LLMs through embedding generate, they are called semantic means they are meanings and they are not three dimension. They sometimes are really lots of dimensions, sometimes a dimension of 3000 or 1500. It's depending on the embedding. They try to capture as much information, just like you can capture in three dimensions, the entire special you know where people where objects are in the world you can, you know with more vectors with more dimensions you can capture even more intricate because the, the space of concepts are very large so that's why it probably it's captured around that and it's basically their association relation in terms of semantic meaning wise they are vectors and vector databases basically just like normal databases store the object 
its metadata and every description of that object together with its vector and provides a convenient way of retrieval and um, working with it. So that's that's what it is. Okay, so it's basically make sure you understand clearly within your group what really Langchain does, what Lama index, you know, what is actually, what, what is good at, what is Lama index good at, what is Langchain good at, and how does they relate with different ap like LLM APIs, including Hugging Face. Hugging Face is an open, um, basically a, a repository, just like GitHub is a repository for code, uh, Hugging Face is a repository for like deep learning and machine learning uh, models, right? And so, and data as well. So it's just that. Um, so you would basically be able to understand how they all relate. OpenAI is just one, one framework provider or one LLM provider, okay? So that's just it. I hope that is clear. Okay, so just uh, we have Michael, go on. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Morning, everyone. So my understanding is this. So if I'm wrong, you will correct me. So we have the company's data, YouTube data. So our goal will be to develop a chatbot that can interact with the company's non-technical non team members in natural language, like uh, a plain English. So if you can, if you ask the chatbot, the chatbot in plain English, so it, it should answer our questions by changing the language to SQL query. So the chatbot will leverage the NLP and LLM to interpret the natural language queries and translate them to appropriate SQL queries. So why do we need that? Because the, the Postgres SQL or other databases use relational database. So it's mandatory to use SQL queries for the database to understand. So then we fit and analyze the, the relevant data from the company's database. Then we generate the insight and visualize in uh, Redash to answer the user's questions. So the and finally, the, chat, the chatbot will be integrated with the company's Redash platform to display the results. So is that correct, I think? Yes, it is correct just oh. how the detail is the difference but the, the concept is exactly that in the redash is a tool uh, commonly used it's uh, you know a bi tool a dashboarding tool and normally the way you can write to redash is that you can connect multiple databases and you can write sql queries to then generate any any dashboard and it has so it basically gives you that two component so one part it allows you easily to write just only create dashboards, maintainable dashboards using SQL. And the other part, it allows you to then connect these dashboards like in a very convenient way. And it is about creating those SQL queries using OpenAI, like given a natural language, as well as given that Redash allows you from that, you can generate visualization. Visualizations in Redash are basically YAML files, just the text files of things. So you can also generate from that. So it's about first is writing the query, second is generating the visualizations. But visualizations in Redash are basically text files. Okay, thank you. So if that's the case, uh, I have three questions. So my first my first question is: Yesterday in my research, I know I st I, I, I watched some of regular expression and spicy and some other. Uh, Python frameworks to train a model like to on how to extract SQL query from natural language. So if you have a sentence or a word to make it a vector. So my question is, so we use OpenAI so that, so we didn't use any other training model. So we use OpenAI. So OpenAI, the OpenAI API does for us uh, what I, I stated earlier. That's my first question. Uh, my second question is when we train the data, so do we train it? Do we give the uh, by do we give the data by ourselves, like the YouTube data, like uh, which country had the most uh, something or which people have? So this kind of data, this kind of question, do we train it by that or it should 
explained by it's let certain me here. Let, let me answer oh. here because there is a, okay. a, a big uh, like issue in terms of understanding. So LLMs are a general models, general language models, right? So they don't you don't give data to them uh, and train them and that. It's just trained. It's like think of them as a developer, an assistant developer. In some areas, this person is very, very good. In other areas, it's not that good. Okay. So now you don't just you basically are this person only needs to know metadata, which means it you you're you're kind of like asking it, okay, I have a table of this form. You know, you don't give it the data, you just say I have this table. I have this schema and this data, you know, and contains some data. And I want you to write SQL that extracts, given the schema, that extracts, you know, uh, the number of, for example, views. You don't need to give the data. Then it gives you just only what it gives you is just the SQL. You have to run to get the data. So you have to execute the SQL, so it's text to text, there's nothing there. It's just more, you ask it, here's my, you know, here's my schema, which is a text, and ask it, how do I write, you know, generate SQL for my, you know, to to understand the number of views, and it gives you SQL. You can check the validity of the SQL, and then once you make sure it's valid, then you run it on a completely, just a normal SQL runner, right? It's not the LLM that runs, and then you get the data. You see what I mean? It's not, it's a lot more different how you, and you don't need to train, just LLMs are very good at that. So there's no need to train. They know that they were trained on to understand SQL, to understand Python code, to understand many things, to understand legal codes, to understand, you know, many other things. You don't need to train them. All you have to give sometimes is a few examples so that it's called in context learning. You, you trigger their knowledge better but nothing more. Is it, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, so okay. the process is you ask, you define your, it's called prompt engineering. You're prompting how do, you know, here is my thing and then I want this, give me that. And it returns like in text uh, in a certain form. Like for example, it's just basically in JSON format or something, it, it 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 is able to do that, but you don't give the whole database. And to get the data and the visualization, you have to run it. Redash has a square runner engine, as well as also dashboard making engine. So it is Redash internal tool that actually gets the data, fetch the data using that SQL, as well as visualize the data using the YAML file. All you need to generate is an SQL code as well as a YAML file that defines the visualization. This okay. will be much more clearer, I think, um, uh, when during tutorials. So, but if just that's the case, just make sure to understand that. Okay, okay. So the long chain and llama index are, I think, uh, task three. So I think we have to. To, to do it in OpenAI usage, yeah? So then yeah, after so, I mean, enhance... OpenAI is the main. So OpenAI is the main, and like that means like, the one that actually exposes the LLM. The, let's call it the model. Now, Llama, like Llama Index or Langchain, are, think of it as scikit. They give you model, like the kind of code to simplify, right? To simplify things. It's their wrappers, you know? The same as you would use scikit, you know? And and then you connect. You can connect using Scikit, for example. You, if you have data, you can load it. If you have model, you can load it. Just like it, it's maybe a slightly different. It's much more like it provides lots of codes for convenience, so that you can do many things like easily. Instead of writing, you know, hundreds lines of codes to do one thing, you you can have it in one line. So they simplify, and they give you lots of way of thinking. How because it's this this is a new way of like LLMs are new new way of like they're like these are new way of things. So or another way to think of it, if LLMs are like RAM and memory of a you know and, and processors of a computer, 
basically Llama Index and Langchain are different apps that you use to do something, you know? So the computer is LLM, while the different apps, Microsoft Word allows you to do some, you know, writing texts conveniently. Uh, the music player allows you. So the, this, L, you know, Llama Index and Langchain provides those kind of apps for you to really leverage the LLM, the actual LLM, the computer. And they can connect with different LLMs, as it was earlier said, either with OpenAI or with Google Gemini or Cohere or you know um, others, Anthropic, many other models. Does that make sense? Yeah. So sh should we use the land chain or is that? Uh, uh... Yeah, it's mentioned, right? It's you. You should use like that's why, because if no, you no, write I... it yourself. Uh -huh. Okay. What I mean is, in in the in the task two, it said to use to use the basic open air usage, and after that, replacing the basic open open air yes. usage to make it. It is uh, exactly. It's because just so that it helps you. It's just a, yeah. You have to understand like ultimately, even if you use many things, you you would need to understand just basic API of open AI, just so that you don't need long chain for everything. Sometimes for a quick text generation or whatever you it's just sufficient the python like the open ai api already sufficient yeah so i think just do as it is described so that you you have a clearer understanding but as you build something complex better to use you know it's the same as like you can use the normal uh, terminal if you are if you are in a computer just to access everything you can do with terminal everything but you know, sometimes you have to write lots of stuff in terminal. So you probably use, I don't know, VS code because it's easier. It gives you more, more applications. So, but knowing terminal is good. So it's not only good, it's mandatory, you know, sometimes. So it's like that. So yeah, just okay. use OpenAI as it is, but then as you build more complex the part, use the lang chain and Lama index, whichever you find easy. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, Abu Bakr, is it a question or? Uh, it's, it's a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, most of my questions have been touched upon, but I want to ask uh, before uh, how the workflow, I want to get to understanding how we are expected to do. For example, I think the first thing would be the data understanding or EDA steps. So yeah, like after we actually made the EDA transform the data and clean it and everything. So do we for vector to populate the data to your vector to the database? For example, we are are we going to add it to the Postgres or we use vectorized database? I, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, so normally the vector, just the vector database comes in more when you are doing some semantic search. But for Redash, all you need is just, uh, so yeah, you have to put, I think the data doesn't need that much cleaning in my opinion. So it's just a lot more you focus on how to do dashboard and how to do stuff with Redash. You already know Redash from last week probably. So you basically just have to put everything in, in uh, Postgres and connect with Redash, create some plots and some dashboard. Now you try to generate some answer, some questions based on like, now that is one way. The other way is to do it something similar from uh, a chatbot, right? So, and then the vector database comes in whenever you want to have like, it's not for the data, it's more for storing some, let's say the schema. The schema you can store, the schema itself can, can be stored in so that you can search semantically which schema that I should extract, right? So many of these text, image, and other things, including, for example, templates you can add as, as part of the vector database. And then you can base those some natural language questions by embedding and by searching for closer similarities, then you will be able to extract. So I think it gets also clearer. Now it might be confusing, but the vector database is much more for things you want to do semantic search. Semantic means meaningful search. Normally keyword search, you know, you can do keyword search in um, in uh, Postgres and others, but semantic search is almost impossible. In a way like you have to, for example, you can filter 
uh, a Postgres database based on, let's say, you know, whether something is in an ascertained column. But to know, for example, okay, you know, you know, what are the apples like fruits? For example, if if it stores only apple and in you know, orange, and you want to ask like fruits that are orange or fruits that are purple, you know, that one it doesn't know how you know it, you have to give it like you have to write a SQL for that in a uh, Postgres. While in a vector database, you can do that because it's it's searching. It's called a vector search or semantic search. So vector databases are more for other things, okay? So you can combine them because they can act like vector databases. But in this case, we want Postgres to do to connect with Redash and to do some, you know, the actual data, while the vector part is for the chatbot, backend or database for the chatbot. Okay, so I think it's, most of it is clear. Uh, and yeah. uh, how about the like so we can plan ahead uh, and better uh, how about the computation requirements for processing and chain because this is our first time you know, this My is very simple it's not okay. it's not uh, it's very simple so any computer can do that because long chain in itself is very small nothing you know it doesn't do it. most of the hard work is done at the LLA so no you know it will not take like more than 300 megabyte of memory or something. It's there's nothing there. A lot of the complexity is handled by the LLM, which is OpenAI or Gemini or others. Okay, what what about the for example, last time I tried to run Redash on uh, on Docker, the latest version it wasn't actually working for me on Docker, so I had to downgrade one version. So how about if I it is the same. With maybe just maybe. yeah maybe just use the same um i think yeah it's just the only we were not providing at this point uh computational resources so you should use yeah exactly whatever works just for redash um and just postgres in your in your computer okay great we only uh, provide the yeah, just keys because they are the, the necessary uh, so actually the uh, they are not uh, there uh, until yesterday i don't know if they are updated or not yeah I so i think they they will they, they will be i mean everyone i think uh, fikarta will send you for everyone okay. either per group but mostly i think as individual so that and yeah and there will be a session also how to responsibly use it just so that you know it costs a lot but it's fine you know it doesn't mean you should be you should run more and just feel free to learn and whatever that's that's your priority should be to really do a good work but at the same time don't yeah it's like make sure to cache some things for example if you are asking again and again don't do that just use some caching mechanism so that if it's already the same thing you know read it from a, a memory instead of just spending some some there so um but other otherwise it will be shared Okay, uh, so so that I don't take uh, much time, I'll ask when other people finish. No, it's okay. So if you, if you have other question, ask. I think other people are benefiting, I'm sure. Okay, so I tried asking yesterday, but uh, the it was mentioned to me that it will be updated on the document, but I'll ask it again. So what is expected on the group work? Like, how, how are we... Uh, going to collaborate uh, what you like I need more explanation on that because it was a yeah. little bit shallow yeah no that's a very good question very so the most important part is of course we know this thing requires lots of things first understanding redash how to hack redash you are you need to hack redash the other is just building the dashboard itself right just you have to do the design plus the front end plus you know, and then setting, and the other is the backend, which means, okay, the chatbot is there, but it all it it needs to it is querying an API, your own API, that does give it, it passes the from you know the kind of the question, and then the from that question you have to generate SQL, and and then you you have to run it, and return the data, as well or maybe you know, and then including also generate also 
a visualization which is in Redash is basically a YAML file. So as you can see, there are a number of components to actually deliver this project. You have to understand Redash, how it works, where where is where do I put a plugin like a, a chatbot? And that in itself, understanding you know and integrating is is in itself something. And then develop like basically the front end component of the chatbot, and then the back end. In each of them are a lot of work. So I would say, and then understand you know like on top of that you really have to experiment. So it's basically you have to divide within yourselves like these things in such a way that you can finish on time. So the group, we assign the group because the amount of work for an individual is a lot. So you have to based on your strings, you know, someone who's a front end part, they should read, you know, no, you need the redash is written in React. So you have to, you have to have a, a, a member who should um, help you in understanding where in the redash. And I think there will be a tutorial also. Um, so that's fine, but that's important. And then implement the front end and the, implement the back end and taste everything. So the group work, you have to divide it within, within yourselves to accomplish this in the amount of time allocated. Is that clear? Uh, yes. And so basically, like uh, delegating tasks based on our yes. uh, strings. Strings, yeah. So talk, discuss. And make sure, like you know, strategize such that you can really, you know, by Thursday you should have something, you know, to start, start really saying like where where is our week, you know, you know, in a way like if you think of it, Saturday is just really very very close, so you that means in one day you have to achieve a lot, so one can focus on just one part and do it, deliver, integrate, and test. So by Thursday, I would say you should have like a clearer idea of where things are, what what needs to be implemented. So the submission would be individual, but the work would be group. No, there is no individual here. It's just ultimately there's going to be one project, one okay. thing. So one. And one so in a way, like if somebody does and doesn't get integrated, it means you didn't do anything. So it's a teamwork. It's like as a team, you just have to deliver this thing. And now, how do you do it? If if just only one person who does it, you know, then there are two really, it's like that. Then fine, like, but it's it's definitely harder to do that. So find a a, a way to work. Could on be it. the same, right? Huh? The submissions could be the same. Yes, the code exactly. Everybody just okay. We will explain that. I think the the, the code. I think it's probably explained the code you can write together contributing together and then to submit you fork that one and then you submit the link from your own github space so that means after the fork part of it so that we know you know how much because we can count how much who contributes where you know how much in the git the report should be individual in a sense the ideas can be similar everything but the writing itself must be individual okay Thank you. Wonderful. If that is not clear, I think in the tutorials, ask and people can um, explain. My battery, unfortunately, will die soon. So I'm going to be, it's only 1%. Um, so maybe I will delegate. If there are any, something that's not clear, maybe uh, who is here? Uh, who's here from Ten Academy? Yes, uh, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So can you just, because I think it's just gonna die. So can you answer the rest of the question as well as also explain just the tutorials, what ha what is what will be given? Um, but Hillary, until it dies. Okay. Uh, okay, my, my question is what is, uh, I'm looking at uh, salary, or the expected outcomes, experience. Yeah, salary. Then, yeah. What is? So salary and, is basically, you know, once you have the query from the LLM, the SQL query, the one that you run, you know, the actual SQL runner is a seller. A seller is just an asynchronous uh, kind of way to run queries. So it's basically the one that connects asynchronously. If you have now, you know, in your dashboard and redash four users, you know, four of them query something, right? So how do you run these different queries and ensure that the
the right thing goes to right right place. That's using this ciliary uh, worker. Okay. Okay. So we can use that uh, in integration with the. It is part of. It's part of. It's part of Redash. So Redash does that actually. In it already, the Redash queries are run on using Celery. Okay. Yeah. So as you read, you, it, it gets clearer. So normally in all of these pipelines, these codes, you know, you need to have runners, like some workers, schedulers, and dashboarding. You know, uh, if you see the, the Docker uh, of uh, Redash, it has these components, a worker, uh, a web server, and then also um, a scheduler. So the scheduler schedules what to run using Celery. Okay, great. I will quit um, and please then continue just if you have questions because a lot of um, these things will get clearer as you read and as you discuss in Slack as well as also during the tutorials. Rehmet is the main focus point because she has in implemented this already and she knows it. So if you have any question, just ask. Okay. Uh, thank you. Rat. So, uh, Bokari, is that a question? You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, for, for our group work, uh, do we use uh, third party applications for communication or shall we create? A channel on Slack. Is there if, if there is any direction from your sets? Yeah, you can create a channel on the Slack if you want. You can also invite tutors on your group so that you can see your conversation with each other. If you have question, you can direct us to us as well on your group chat. Actually, it's better if you create a group on the chat. So if there's also a miscommunication, someone not answering in the group, we can uh, see through directly. Things like this happen in group discussion. There will be co complaints will come up saying this person is not responding and stuff like that. So inviting me, Rodas, other tutors on your group chats might be beneficial to see that you are trying to make a conversation with your team members. Oh, that clears up, Okay, we'll do that. Okay, Jarvis. So my question is on the integration part. How are we going to integrate uh, our course? Uh, I think, uh, based on my understanding, we're gonna uh, uh, give tasks for each other so that we can combine and build the project. But how are we going to integrate uh, the others' uh, uh, code, uh, if my question is clear? Yeah, so in GitHub, you have the option to create an organization in GitHub repo. So what you're going to do is one of you just create an organization repo. And on that organization repo, you can invite collaborators. So your team members will add will be added on your organization as a collaborator. So which means everything that you push will be pushed on that particular organization. So you will have one main organization repo. It's just when you submit, you will have to instead of uh, submitting that organization's repo, you will you can there's an option to fork it. Let me just share my GitHub repo. I think that's better. Okay, so, so there is there is a means to import the organization repo to our own repo. Yeah. Yes, there's a there is a fork uh, option on your GitHub repo. If you see, if you can see it, there is a forking option. Okay. Um, so it's just one person should make the the organization first and invite the others. 
So from your group members, just pick one person as a team leader, maybe just a sub person, create a, an organization repo and invite the other team members on that organization repo. And everything that you push will be uh, put it on that organization and create a branch if you want, just to see if you divide the tasks between each other, maybe for someone to do the front end and the other to, to do the back end part, if you divide like this, uh, you can also create a branch for the front end and back end and someone can, uh, whoever is assigned to the text, push their work. Anyway, at the end of the day, we're gonna see the community history, we show us by you using, by each username who committed what. So we will assess you based on your commit. So everyone needs to commit to the organization. So uh, just give me, I mean, there was an organization that I have before. So if there's any other question, you can uh, go ahead and ask in the meantime. Um, you can see my GitHub, uh, can you see it? I'm not able to see. Yeah, okay, let me share it again. So uh, I'm not signing up on my GitHub, so I, I am not able to create an organization, but let's just say someone has created this organization, which you will find how you can create an organization repo on YouTube. So it's just a simple process, it's like creating a normal repo. So after you create your organization on the setting, you can go and invite collaborators. So those collaborators, let's say this is organization repo, everyone can push everything here, but when you submit, if I'm the team leader, my username is this one. So it, the organization would be under my username. But the others, when you want to submit this repo as your, as your repo, you have to fork it. How you will fork it, this option says fork. So when you click fork, it will copy paste it on your GitHub repo. From that person's repo, it will paste it on your, on your personal GitHub repo, which then, uh, this is because I'm not signed in, but once you're signed in, it will redirect you to your personal uh, GitHub page and it will give it a name, just create, then say create and you will share that link with us when during submission. It's just a simple process. I hope that's clear. Let's just, uh, it's it. Is there another question on the documentation? I think it's pretty clear what you are supposed to do. So just to tell you what the tutorial tutorials would be, uh, on today's afternoon, I'm gonna show you a startup chat add-on that will be added on the Redis source code so that you can access it on your web server and just do some chatting. But uh, the right now the add-on only make uh, a simple chat with the open LLA you have to make a connection with your queries and, uh, and all the background, the backend information that the chat need to have to answer user questions based on uh, regarding that particular data or for that particular dashboard. So uh, I'm gonna show you how you can install it on the research Redash source code, including how you can install Redash as well. Uh, so this is to, gonna be today's tutorial. On to more tutorial, uh, it's not going to be focused there, but Imtanan will give you prompt engineering and using chat pork back in these two tutorials. Imtanan will cover tomorrow. As for Thursday, again, you will have a tutorial with me the whole day. How, what does mean asynchronous execution? We asked that uh, about salary today. You will also see a few examples on what salary, the purpose of salary as well in regarding to asynchronous execution. Uh, and we're gonna see how ADA leader, AutoGPT, 
these are different LLM agents, how they work with me as well. Uh, on Friday, Intenan again will cover how you can, uh, how Vector Database layers. So uh, that would be it on to Friday morning that you are, will end. So at the meantime, in each tutorial, you can prepare your question if you have regarding the tutorial or in the entire week project, and we will be able to help you. So these are the tutorials. I think most of it will, uh, has been covered with TRB, so if you don't have any questions, this is what's expected from you from this week. Abraham Taka is creating organization mandatory. That would be much easier to do that. So it's not a big uh, process. Uh, again, you can create um, your own personal repo and uh, again, invite collaborators on your personal repo. But instead of doing that, just to make it more uh, a professional way, creating an organization for your group is much better. If you create this on your repo, it will be a personal repo and just you are just inviting others to participate on your repo. But if you have an organization, it will be for your team. People will be added to your organization. So it's more professional. So I would recommend uh, the organization. It's not a hard thing to do, but if you have been trouble on doing that, you can again reach out on the Slack. But there are a lot of references out there. Uh, Hilary, go ahead. Okay, my question is, uh, how do I, uh, how do we get started? Like, uh, what do you recommend we do first? Because uh, I'm confused, is it red? Today, or... I think would be uh, from a past experience, having a working red dash that uh, was the uh, most problem trainees used to complain about so I, I i'm not able to run the reduction my system so for today i would recommend other than just also uh, reading on these references to understand these new concepts make sure today by today to make sure reduction is in, uh, running on your machine so i would recommend starting from there i don't okay. know if reduction is running on yours though hillary mine is not so uh, yeah. i'll start with that Start with that one and also read the other references. Okay. Uh, just if since you have uh, tried to install Redash, it might be better. Uh, I seem to find this Redash installation much better. I'm going to share it here, but you also have the access on the Slack. So just uh, remove all the Docker image that you already installed on your system and start from scratch. Uh, this one starts from installing Docker on your system. So maybe if the error is persisting, remove the Docker installation from your machine and install the Docker from scratch with this step until uh, through the reduction installation. So if it's, this doesn't work, reach out on the Slack again. We can have a one-to-one -one meeting and do the installation. Uh, Jarvis? Yeah, if, if uh, for, for installing the Redash part, uh, if I am able to see the Redash UI, is it, does that mean I'm successfully, I successfully installed the Redash? Yes, that means you have successfully installed it. So the add-on is another part, yes? Yeah, the add-on is another part. It is shared on the documentation as well. You can go ahead, follow the steps and install it the add-on. If you have a working redash, you can go ahead with the installation that part. Where was it? Um, there's a link for the other one somewhere. Um, put it in. I saw it also. I think it was in. You have seen it? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just go to the GitHub page. There's a very written readme step-by-step -step guide so install it on your redash okay a get hatcha which link i do asking for the redash installation okay i'll share it on the slack it's also shared i think on the resource parts 
I bet I'm not to share it on the resource. Okay, there, I have shared it on the Slack resource part. Okay, any other question? Okay, time is good. sorry so if there are no more questions we can end this session okay, could you give a reaction that we should end thank you okay uh bye so we can meet later reach out on the slack if you have questions again okay.